About 300 friends and family members gathered near Berkeley, California to celebrate the life of Professor Tor Brecke. He changed my life forever by virtue of introducing me to geotechnical engineering and tunneling. So if it wasn't for Tor, I wouldn't be in tunneling today. Tor was at all the special moments of my life. He was with me at my wedding. He was uh, with me at dinner when it was announced that I was a partner at Jacobs Associates. So you know, Tor has really been there for me, just uh, not just not just professionally. Brecke joined the faculty at Davis Hall, home of UC Berkeley's civil and environmental engineering in the 1970s. Colleagues praised his practical approach to underground construction. I, I think Tor made an imprint by bringing some very practical ideas, bringing geology into the mainstream of the tunneling problem and doing it in such a way that is understood by the people who design tunnels and more importantly, the people who are building them. Richard Goodman was instrumental in bringing Brecke to the U.S. They first met when Goodman was an assistant professor at Berkeley and Brecke a visiting professor from Norway. After he left, there was a gap in my life, so I was determined to get him back. And I worked and I secured for him a position at Berkeley, went three times to Norway to convince him to accept it, and he came over. At that time, I had to supplement. We only got a half position from the university. That's all I had and I supplemented it with my research project. But then quickly they found out what a guy he was, what he knew, how wonderful he was, and how he fit into our geotechnical group that uh, the full position was provided. Goodman also spoke of Brecke's commitment to his students. He was just wonderful. If somebody had a trouble, didn't have any funds perhaps to get home to the sick, visit a sick father in some far distant land, he'd find a way to get them there. He really treated his, his students as equals and engaged them really on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, on their level, and that was really the great thing about him. Many also shared personal memories. He was fiercely defensive about the quality of, of anything that was Norwegian. So if I was at the table and was delighted with a particular cheese, he would tell me about a Norwegian cheese that was much better. He didn't uh, treat fools kindly. Like I said, I've, I've seen him get up out of meetings and walk out when he, he would say to me, I can't stand it anymore, I'm leaving. We were hiring a secretary, and it was a, an older woman and a, a younger woman, and he said, <laughs> le vieux casserole fait la plus belle soupe. The old casserole makes the best soup. I ended up being in his office at the university, and I was told that they painted it eight or 10 or 12 times. They had to get the curtains dry cleaned several times because of the cigarette smoke. And it still didn't get it all the way out. Everyone remembers tall with a cigarette. Cigarettes, yeah, sometimes with two cigarettes. So, yeah. He was really, uh, he was a pleasure to work with simply because he was, uh, he was so knowledgeable. I think his legacy is, uh, is his students more than anything else though. He was a very significant force in the education of geotechnical engineers, and uh, we taught the courses together. He had a special design mind. I love the guy, and I'm very, very sad about his, his death.